I want to end off with a, a few different use cases of where we've used this on ourselves or, uh, you know, the popular term dog fooding. So we're going to go through four of these. The first one happens to be one of our most popular endpoints. And we had gotten some complaints or heard back from customers that things were slow on one of our most popular web pages. And it, we, we didn't quite know what was happening right up front. But after tracing it, we then found out it was due to having a large amount of projects and the way that we had implemented our endpoint was not efficient for those uh, when retrieving a large amount of projects. So uh, long story short, we made the improvements uh, over our two week sprint here. Uh, you can see that we got the time, uh, the P95 time down from 1.2 seconds, initially down to about 900 milliseconds. Uh, in the first release and then uh, through some iterative releases got it all the way down to 300 milliseconds. So quite a bit of improvement here from 1.2 seconds to 300 milliseconds uh, within a couple weeks. So, so initially we were able to trace this down, uh, optimize the endpoint uh, accordingly. So what we ended up doing is batching it uh, as, as necessary and we were able to verify the performance improvement here. This next dog food example I want to go over is very interesting. So on our issues page, uh, releases pops up in a, uh, a variety of places, and it looks like the way we have this implemented, or had this implemented, we were hitting the same API multiple times and not caching it or not reusing the result when necessary. So on the front end side, this was providing a poor user experience as things were loading at various times inconsistently as well as uh, there was more heavy lifting happening in the browser that need, did not need to happen. But more importantly, we were issuing more requests than necessary on our back end. And this is something we had realized but didn't quite know. The more we investigated this, this is what we figured out, that we're hitting this too often, that this can be improved on and optimized, and that's exactly what we did. So the end result was uh, this no longer looked like what we see here. We were only hitting the API absolutely when necessary. Otherwise, the result was cached and we were pulling from that. The next two dog fooding examples I'm going to uh, go over via blog post. Uh, this next one is pretty personal to me because it was actually when I was demoing a new feature of ours and it took too long to load and our head of product took it upon himself to figure out the answer. And dog food example number four is one of our engineering managers the debugging his way through why our new alerts view was taking too long to load and was slow. So let's head over to the blog and load up both of those blogs. So the first one, as I mentioned, it involves myself. At first, everyone was blaming my internet connection as I was demoing our new release health feature. And then Dave went through figuring out what exactly was going on here and figured out in the end that it was this team's endpoint and routed it to the right team, thus avoiding a big escalation crisis and having a raging meal going around the office flipping tables. The final dog food example was our engineering manager who wanted to figure out why the specific alerts view was really slow. So here you can see uh, he himself uh, used Discover to figure out uh, and developed the query to figure out the P99 is 12 seconds and 9 seconds for some of the folks that, that work at Sentry. And this is unacceptable. Obviously, we can't push this uh, to production like this. Uh, this would not be well, well received and we would hear about it pretty soon. So from there, we got it in the hands of our experts. So this is what it looked like before. And uh, a big problem was that we were loading all of these stats uh, that we didn't need to at our initial page load, which it made the whole page load seem slow and absolutely wasn't necessary in terms of the whole experience to know about upfront. So we got our experts on it. You can see loading is very little, as well as we're loading the critical API request first, rendering that data and all the stat stuff and the graph stuff that isn't critical upfront is then being put out for later. 
So what we've shown in these examples is that we were able to find the slowdown, whether it was on the front end or the back end, address it and verify that we were fixing the right thing and the user experience was improving, seeing the P95s or whatever relevant metrics go down or up, depending on what they are, and thus iterating accordingly, and then proactively setting alerts as we need to to make sure things aren't out of the ordinary. The point being is that we want to let developers know the quality of their code, not just regarding errors, but regarding the performance, how the code is behaving, how long things are taking, should they be concerned, or go back to developing new features, bug fixes, and improving the product that they're working on.